So that's why I don't leave the objects that I make. I don't leave them there. Um, yeah, so, and I, I'm pretty sure that um, the nature will absorb all these uh, traces of my presence and any human presence and the nature will be there even when all the humans are gone and uh, there won't be any trace of humans and uh, if, if, if as if we even haven't lived there. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can see Bruce has, call, has got his hand up. Uh, Bruce, would you like to uh -huh. ask a question? Hello, Bruce, your hand is up. You have to unmute your microphone, we cannot hear you. Not entirely sure if Bruce would like to speak to us. Bruce, if you hear us, your microphone is muted. I'm not sure. Uh, I cannot unmute it from, from my end. Yeah. And we can see that your hand is up. So maybe you would like to ask a question to Olya. Is that better? It's okay. Is that better? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, greetings from Ireland. Uh, Hello. We, we, we send uh, we send cyber hugs of of support, and we're we're doing what we can, and we 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 stand in unity with you. Um, I I haven't heard much. I haven't heard as much as I'd like, um, um, of your talk, but it's it, it's I certainly, I certainly can, and do see the way you see the earth as 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 a, an art fanatic, I suppose, but um, as a human being, that that really it is fragile. And we, it, it it can be injured so greatly and has been, and it's something that that really the world needs to stand up and 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 um, you know start working on. Um, yeah. So that's. Thank you so much. So it's a beautiful comment. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, no, it, it comes from the heart. So it's 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 not yeah. it's not it's not there to impress. It, it just <laughs> it, it comes from the heart of of not only myself but I think Irish people across across all communities. Yes. So. Very much needed. You know the thank you. Words thank of you. support. You know they are very much needed. Thank you very very much for that. It's, it's very thank it's it's so very much. little. Um. Um. Yeah. It's it's. I, I I prefer to listen at the moment uh, rather than make any more comment. But it, it's um, okay. You know, suffice to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, ladies. So Ala and Ola, <laughs> shall we go, go back uh, to the presentation, and then we will make space for questions uh, from from today's group, right? Uh, yeah, I just I was just uh, about to ask uh, Ala about uh, show to show some uh, specific sign from that work because I will be showing it offline. Davo uh, spasiva. So uh, this was the work um, which is like exactly one one was made exactly one year ago, and the sign says so it's like kind of welcome sign. And it says, welcome to the motherland. And it happens so it um, like transformed a bit uh, in these uh, circumstances. I have the, all these metal signs with me at my, at my home studio. Uh, and uh, this sign, uh, we, we uh, took it to our basement shelter. And I will show, you, uh, show it to you a bit later because it's something that we used to decorate our place of hiding yeah so that's all we can um, можно переходить к другому ты хочешь чтобы я дальше показывала ну следующее следующее my new horizon uh -huh. Uh, 
работаем. Now, uh, this work actually was uh, created uh, in early 2020 when we all were at home and uh, in March we couldn't even go outside and I was really missing my um, opportunities to see the landscape so that's why I uh, I took uh, like every photos, uh, for every photo of uh, my works where I worked with the landscapes, and I cut them. Uh, took uh, like one pixel wide stripe from from them and uh, compiled it uh, to the new uh, uh, to the new landscape uh, to the new horizon line. And like, so because it was the only way I could see this new horizon. And Dala had the question about this work. Tak, ja mam też pytanie do tego. Um, jak coś odpowiedziało już, to y, jeszcze raz możesz mi powtórzyć. Y, bo ta twoja praca dla mnie nabrała nowego znaczenia w tych czasach i to, co widzimy na przykład, co teraz się dzieje z miastami w Ukrainie, to za niedługo mam nadzieję, że nie będzie tak, ale będziemy zbierać ich po zdjęciach. No niektórzy, jak widzimy, jak zostali mocno zniszczony. Wiem, że prognozy są trudne, dziś pozostały tylko życzenia. Jaki jest twój bliski nowy horyzont? To mm -hmm. dzisiaj albo jutro. Mm -hmm. uh, Olia, so I will translate uh, what Ala said uh, to everybody. Uh, Ala, first of all, you know, introduced this, um, uh, her question with, um, with commenting on the situation that uh, the situation in Ukraine is redefining uh, everything we know about humanity and uh, the world. And so uh, I know the forecasts are difficult today. Uh, all that remains are desires. What is, your, uh, what is your new horizon today, tomorrow? Are you thinking of leaving or staying? Uh, these days I... Um, uh... <laughs> It is for the first time when I com can be completely sure about what about my future. <laughs> I I don't want to leave. I I I used to like I used to think about uh, like before. I used to think about uh, going somewhere else to live there, to stay there, um, to work somewhere. Uh, yeah, but now I think that. Um, the same the same reason uh, because of the same reason why I uh, haven't left uh, Kharkiv and I, I've stayed uh, though uh, I had so many opportunities and still have uh, I I really looking forward to the moment when I will be able to uh, go out and start uh, working to restore my city to help restore restoring my country and this is like uh, I'm completely sure that I I don't I don't want to leave. I will be, uh, yeah. That's kind of uh, it's it's not about like not traveling somewhere. I think uh, the traveling and the speaking about Ukraine is uh, will be uh, even more important uh, in the future. But in terms of uh, like living and uh, I don't know working. I I will I'm I'm deeply connecting my future with Ukraine because yeah it's it's my re responsibility right I feel that responsibility the right like right now I feel I feel this uh, as 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 never as never could feel I would say. I hope I hope that I will be uh, the, this new horizon will be like the pure horizon, uh, 
of pure, uh, of clear, clean Ukrainian land, of rich Ukrainian land, uh, and uh, the clear and clean Ukrainian sky, from 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 which you we will we won't um, uh, ex expect something to fall on our heads like rockets or missiles anymore. So I really hope <laughs> for that. Olya, I, I have two questions actually uh, to you. Uh, one is a re actually one is request and the other one is a question. Uh, could you tell us a little bit, uh, because I had a chance to uh, read very carefully your profile on Facebook and I was incredibly moved and touched and shaken by your uh, heartbreaking um, sort of uh, informations about missing artists and uh, how you guys are um, organizing sort of um, any sort of chain reaction to get any information about them. Could you tell us a little bit more about it? Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, actually that's true. Uh, some of our friends, uh, colleagues are, um, we cannot reach them because they are in Mariupol or in the other cities uh, and towns that are blocked uh, by Russians. Uh, for example, in Mariupol, uh, the situation is, is super horrible. People cannot just catch the mobile connection and even tell their uh, family if they are alive. Uh, so we cannot, cannot uh, find out anything about them. So yes, we like tried to um find someone maybe who have connections maybe who has who knows someone who can just go there or just say something uh, just to find out if this person is 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 still alive and uh, yeah it's kind of uh, what community can do and uh, we actually it's not only for the artists we we try to spread the information for the, like about mariupol i try to share about it and to make people speak about mariupol every every day because uh, what's going on there it's like uh, it can it it just cannot happen uh in 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 20, in 2022 in the center of europe uh, thank you for your answer. And the, the, the second uh, is the question, can you tell us where exactly you are now? Uh, and what is the place that you are talking to us from? Uh, it's actually, so uh, we live in the old house, uh, like 19th century house uh, in the old city center. And uh, the house has a very thick walls. And that's why, so we have the, com it, it is for former uh, communal apartment block. Uh, I, I bet many can remember from Soviet times, these kind of uh, communal apartments and still people live here in communal apartments. While like uh, we, with my partner, we here, like we are renting the separated uh, apartments. But we still have communal corridor, which is very well protected from all the explosions because of the wall. The walls are very thick here, like one meter thick, uh, and we um, spend uh, a lot of time in the corridors as well. Because uh, if we don't want to go to the basement, uh, we go to the corridor and wait there a bit, because like during these days we got very tired of all these alarms, so we don't we don't want to go so far to to the basement and we just okay we just go to the corridor and uh, check if if it is okay we will come back home so i'm now in the corridor and it's kind of uh, after the basement it is uh, the most protected place here because of uh, yeah i can just uh, uh, i can start showing so so it's <laughs> It's total walls here. Oh, uh, if I if I already turn the camera this way, I can just go to the basement if you if you like. So I will I will speak about a little bit about what's going on here. 
it, it is going to be too, it's going to be dark here i must warn you um, sorry okay and maybe you are losing the connection as well no uh, here here is okay because we have uh, several um, levels of the basement and the connection is lost only on the lowest level i will be showing uh, a bit of the top level of the basement actually like um, this basement uh, used to be the, the pawn shop uh, and um, and it was privatized illegally and it was locked when we got here and we had to cut the lock here so the women from our neighborhood they came here and with their bare hands with the chainsaws they cut the door open just to let us inside so yeah it's the first level of the basement and that door it faces the street so we could hear some some machines passing by this is the first level of the basement and some neighbors are here and what i'm going to show you is the sign so we decorated with it Can you please translate it to us uh, or perhaps read it and translate it? From what I remember, you are welcome. Welcome uh, to the motherland. Thanks. Mm, Olya, uh, I don't know about others, but I think we're not hearing you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she let me. Let yeah, me... okay. Uh, she's Sorry, back. can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've, bit, I've lost you a bit. I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I got to go out from the basement. I, I hope that you have seen something. Yes, yes, yes. Bogdan was asking about the translation for the sign, but I think we got it. Yes, Welcome yes. To so... the motherland, yeah? Yes, 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 yes correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Olya, can I also ask you, uh, like, uh, uh, which part of the city are you, are you in? I mean, obviously, this is a residential, big, old building, so you must be in the center. Yes, it is the center, but it's an old city center, uh, which is not so populated. So it's kind of a bit uh, aside the historical part. Uh, and uh, it's a bit, uh, so we have uh, like the more newer center, which was uh, built uh, in early, in late 19th and early 20th century. and. Uh, it's more like a lot of infrastructure is there, a lot of administrative buildings, and here we don't have so much uh, places which uh, would be interest interesting for the Russians to destroy. And not so many people because they aim to the most uh, populated districts. So like, for example, my mom uh, lives uh, in the district, which is like second uh, largest uh, district, living district in Ukraine, it has uh, almost half a million people living there, and uh, they uh, like they don't they just bombing uh, they are just bombing it nonstop these days, and uh, that's why. So she was hiding in uh, the cellar, 
with her friends like for the first week and uh, after that she managed to escape and now she she stays uh, with us here ja mogę zapytać bo Olga zrobiła film czwarty dzień wojny, który można zobaczyć na YouTubie i na Facebooku i chciała też zapytać o Ola, czy będziesz kontynuować. Też warto zobaczyć, bo są wywiady z sąsiadami bardzo wzruszające to jest wideo. Ala, ty możesz pokazać na, na screenie chociaż obraz tego, a ja już tłumaczę mm -hmm. o co chodzi, nie? Dobra. Ok, so Ala commented on a film uh, which uh, Olia uh, created. Uh, it contains uh, also interviews with, um, with, with her neighbors. I asked Ala to share the screen and to show us uh, that page so we all know what you know um, Olia is going to talk about. Uh, so uh, Olia, could you could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so uh, we just on day four we decided to document what's going on there and to uh, uh, to share the stories of our neighbors. Um, and come like make a, a bit document a short documentary of it. I uh, I really want to continue it, um, uh, not in the basement, for example, for like probably, but uh, in the city when we are, will be able to go out and uh, show uh, the life because you know the life uh, and the routine. Um, in the half destroyed city is going to be very, very different from what we used to know. Uh, and all, we all uh, will, will have to use this half destroyed city to, to go to, to like, the businesses will be opening. Uh, we will go like the cafes, we will go to the supermarkets, but uh, never the things that we used to know, they will never be the same, for example, not so long ago when they were bombing the city center like not far from us they were aiming to the main like second main square where many administrative buildings uh, were uh, located and uh, they hit the uh, the building where our like uh, favorite coffee shop was located and uh, i felt like when i knew that like knowing that there were luckily there were no no victims were there but knowing that my uh, life will change like in even with this small in these small aspects like going every day to the same coffee shop to drink the same cup of the same coffee and it's going to it, it, it will be gone it's gone already so everyone will have to invite some new small 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 rituals small uh, like all these small things uh, from which the life uh, regular life uh, consists actually like so yeah it's uh, it's going to be a bit that that's why i'm afraid a bit to go out, outside so yeah and actually many neighbors uh, have already leave, uh, have already left us to, they went to the West uh, or abroad. So we even don't know if they will come back, if, if, if we will see them again, but it's, it's, it's great that they are safe, at least now. Um, can yes. anyone jump in? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Hi, Olaya. It's Ellen. Uh, uh, you know, Ellen and uh, Olaya and I oh, did a, a, a workshop two years ago. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. About, nice to see you here. Yes. And I, I just want to um, tell you, you know, I want to give you a little perspective on the United States, you know. Um, right now, in terms of media coverage, uh, because of the news cycles, this is covered but not number one coverage all of a sudden they've decided it's just too ongoing you know so they've dropped cut not doesn't mean they dropped coverage it's just not the main headline that much mm -hmm. anymore 
Um, the second thing is that I'm very curious about your strategy should all your electricity be cut off. The third thing is, you know, I'm sure you must understand uh, very clearly that uh, everyone is worried about World War III and a nuclear war. I'm sure you understand that. And this is the flashpoint. Um, four is that they're also very worried about the geopolitical situation with China and Russia. And so this conflict has is basically shaping a new world order. I'm sure you understand that. So going from the macro level, you know, which is the largest level of geopolitics and nuclear warfare down to your personal level, which is, um, you know, what are you going to do if the electricity cuts or if the um, uh, mobile towers cut or if the internet is cut, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm saying that now because, you know, we're talking to you now and then next week, who knows? So can you, without giving away any information, can you talk about that in general? Uh, yes, actually, like um, uh, right now, uh, our mobile uh, operators, they uh, launched the like uh, national roaming uh, network so that if you lose your connection, you can uh like uh try to reach uh, through another uh network another big coverage so uh this is quite helpful uh yeah in the uh, we are lucky like in my city we are lucky that uh, we are not uh, in a blockade and uh i'm certain actually like given the situation with the russian troops and the all these, uh, we are sure that we are not being, uh, we, we will not be uh, blocked. We will not be surrounded and we will not be um, cut uh, off every communication uh, because it's uh, the, like the first weeks uh, clearly shown that it's, it's impossible. We are too big city uh, and uh, they, they even don't dare to approach. Uh, by land, by ground, so that's why they uh, they are just firing from the distance. So um, this it gives us hope that we are going to have communications. And as uh, we see, so they are firing to these living districts, and they uh, like dam do damage, make damages to their uh, communications. But uh, but uh, the our communal services manage to fix them. Uh, they work like really 24 seven. And uh, I, 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 know, I know that because both of my grandmothers, they live in those districts and they had uh, like two days without electricity and then everything was fixed. Um, yeah, luckily, um, but if in the worst, we, are, we have the plan B to like with my family to leave the city. Uh, obviously, we have our car uh, like loaded and ready to go at any time. But uh, still, but for now, we don't have any uh, sign of uh, uh, of of the, that, that that we are we will need to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, um, th th this is the moment when uh, Alia would appreciate questions from you, Aileen. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. for Thank you. Uh, for you jumping in and asking the question. You can either write your question in the chat or you can put your hand up and just speak directly, uh, whichever you prefer. Bogdan, I saw your uh, little uh, hand up. Yeah. I, I have to admit that, that uh, I have so many questions um, uh, and um, uh, there's a separate list uh, appearing in my head of questions that I I thought to ask, and I, I just don't think um, it's uh, somehow appropriate to ask because uh, obviously we are very curious um, about uh, your your realities. Uh, some someone that uh, here the family is watching as well, so I got the whispered question like, "What do you do for food?" and this kind of stuff. And it's not that we are want to be voyeuristic. Uh, we are all uh, very uh, concerned about the situation. This is this is not even the right word. 
um, uh, to use. And also I wanted to tell you uh, something that uh, perhaps is not a question, but it's an information uh, for you. There are people here from very, very many uh, uh, parts of the world and the only part of them I know. Um, uh, I, a lot of people I had uh, emotional conversations uh, with about, and I see uh, on the upper side of the screen, uh, Juana Davidescu, who just came back uh, after five days of uh, helping on the northern Romanian uh, borders. Um, my daughter from the Czech Republic is joining us. Uh, our guest from Montenegro, who is the head of the Art Academy in Cetinje, who theoretically would be supposed to make a bilateral um, uh, discussion with us, but somehow you know, you become part um, of, of this. And I see my coworkers, some of which are uh, dead tired after uh, so uh, many days. Also, I want you to know that over the last 18 days, I have calculated that there have been about one person per second entering uh, Poland. Uh, uh, we wow. are witnessing the... Um, appearance of a, of, of a Ukrainian minority overnight here, which is perfectly welcomed by, by many people, including myself. So I, I guess, I don't know, it's, it's not my position to say this, but, and I wouldn't say it if I wouldn't see the peace in you, you know, and how, how strong you are, that this is also a good, mo a good moment. And I think, uh, uh, you will win, and I think we will win. Yeah, thank and you this so is, much. I don't mean this as a conclusion. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, I have many questions, but I don't want to ask them. I just. I'm just happy you are here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy too. Thanks. Actually, actually, like, uh, please ask this uh, kind of uh, any questions because uh, I'm here as uh, like you know as a live witnesser of what's going on and live witnesser of what. Uh, um what russia does to the regular people it's also like a document for the history for the history of the russian crime so i'm feel like responsible to report about uh what we experience here please please say about this and you know i will just say that one of the stupid questions that i wanted to ask related to to the backlash against russian culture but you know what it's not the time to talk about that just like it's mm -hmm. not time to talk about russian cuisine I don't give a shit about their cuisine. <laughs> and this is the time when I don't give a shit about their culture. This is the, the time for you to tell us. So for instance, you, you, you know, t uh, tell us about uh, Ukrainian cuisine now. Like, let's see, because this was the question from my family. Uh, yeah. What do you eat? <laughs> <laughs> now yeah actually yeah as i will say that we are lucky not to be blocked from the world and we have all the deliveries uh, and uh, like from the other cities some of like the, the factories here that uh, were like for producing uh, some bread and stuff there yeah they obviously had to shut uh, down and stop uh, functioning um, yeah, but we receive uh, a lot of uh, like supplies to our supermarkets from uh, the nearest uh, cities and towns. Uh, and uh, yeah, supermarkets are working. Uh, you can buy uh, almost everything there still, though you need to queue and to go as early as you can because yeah, people try to stock uh groceries uh to like to to make this uh, uh like uh, to, to buy for themselves as as much as they can so you if if you are late uh you can find the empty shelves uh yeah and uh, because my mom has joined us here he cooks for me like the food that i haven't ate uh, since childhood or since uh, like the time that i when i moved uh, to live uh, with my boyfriend so i'm really happy here actually i i haven't ate so much as like before 
it's uh, it's really amazing and i feel uh, that uh, like yeah people keep asking about they they think that uh, yeah we might be starving here and for luckily for Kharkiv is not the situation and even for the, the very dangerous areas we have a lot of volunteers working and the, the uh, governmental services uh, for humanitarian aid they give it away in schools in some post offices like ever in in the metro station so my uh, my grandma uh, grandfather like every day he goes to the nearest school and receive something. Uh, so yeah, here it's uh, the situation is okay. Uh, we yeah we are lucky not to be blocked. Where while uh, yeah there are cities like Mariupol that were uh, yeah that experienced like a true blockade with no food with no water. And I know that people there even melt snow to get some water. And the Russians, they don't let any humanitarian aid inside. They stopped the humanitarian convoy uh, yesterday, uh, even though it is um, like followed by the church uh, priests who, you know, they, they, they don't give a shit about who is, who is supporting and uh, who is. Uh, so today they, some people managed to leave Mariupol um, and it's like very happy, very nice news for us, but uh, still, so it's almost half a million people uh, city and almost uh, 300 people are still there and like they have been, they have been under the shellings like nonstop entire city, like 100 bombs onto the city per day. So yeah, it's very different uh, right now in Ukraine, and you can see like uh, in in Lviv, uh, people still go to the cafes, uh, enjoy their coffee, though they are like very afraid and uh, they, with their, all these alarms that are throughout the Ukraine, uh, and in the in the other cities, yeah, people have to melt snow to get the water. Yeah. Uh, these times, uh, in these uh, during these times, you really start valuing uh, your like things that you couldn't um, influence somehow. So I haven't. Uh, so I I was lucky to find this place for rent in this district, which is because before we lived uh, in the district that is uh, totally destroyed almost right now. So uh, you start valuing the luck here. I also have got a lot of questions, but I don't want to take the floor. Uh, so if you would like to ask questions to Olia, uh, here is your moment or comment or give support. Um, just waiting. Yeah, so can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. So I was just speaking with my Russian friend and like he wanted to ask you guys, like Ukrainian people, uh, what do you think of the Russian people now? And if you are aware that uh, they are against this war and uh, that the government doesn't represent them, he wants me to ask you this. Uh, yeah, about Russian people, actually, like we're all here very emotional right now. So. Uh, when we are asked for, by some people who are in safe places, like to um, like stop hating Russians, stop hating all Russians, we just can't because because we are in here uh, and these emotions, these uh, hate and this kind of uh, you know aggression towards them is something that um, help helps us to to stand and fight right now and not to go deep to some des despair or something. It's, uh, yeah, some, some psychologists, they say that you should uh, turn your energy to the uh, anger and it's more effective when you experience in stress. It's more effective than uh, for survival than any other emotion. And uh, yeah, we 
and actually like we have uh, reasons to think uh, like this about uh, Russian people because um, the because the there are many of them are still supporting this regime uh, and uh, supporting not only actively but passively when they don't go to the streets uh, they afraid to go there I, I, I completely understand the historical and uh, political situation that doesn't let them do that. But uh, for example, for us Ukrainians is completely uh, un in understandable when only one policeman can arrest, like can beat 30 people. And we hear, we, we, we hear, we see like in Kherson, in the city of Kherson, which is temporarily occupied by Russians right now, people go to the streets uh, to protest for the pro-Ukrainian protest to show that Kherson is Ukraine and they are not afraid of tanks. They are not afraid of these uh, Russian soldiers, they have fire at, at the air in front of people and people don't go. Uh, people still stand there for their freedom, uh, while we see that um, Russian demonstrations are really, really failing, and we are very upset about this. But uh, we cannot just be at, like attached to the uh, attracted with people who are who who do uh, not uh, enough to for themselves for their own freedom. Unfortunately. I wish that uh, they, you know, they could fight uh, better for their own freedom rather than going to McDonald's for the last time or the, to I IKEA for the last time. Um, yes, and also the also the another reason is about uh, we like here in Kharkiv, um, many of us have uh, families or relatives or friends in Russia because we are very close and. Uh, that's why that's why they are they thought they were thinking that uh, we we will surrender like uh, during the first day they didn't expect that the Kharkiv bilingual city Russian and Ukrainian speaking city will resist so much uh, so and we all we, all all of us we get uh, the messages from our Russian friends and relatives where they say. Uh, no, it's a total lie. Putin doesn't bomb uh, bomb you. You you are mistaken. It's your own army bombs you, and they are talking to our to us who who are sitting in the in the bomb shelters, under like hearing the constant explosions, while they say no, it's uh, we we are not. There is no war you you mistaken and to my uh, like to one of our neighbors who took uh, the picture took the photo from their own uh, apartment from the window and sent to one of the relatives he said uh, it's photoshopped everything is photoshopped uh, we are not in war with you we're not uh, aiming to the civil buildings all this is is uh, you know is fake and uh, after all this, we just cannot speak with them as like as as usual. Like for example, I uh, cut off almost all my connections with the Russian media, regardless of you know of their position, of their like opinions. I just cannot can I I don't feel that I I can I can have these connections now. After the war is over, we will talk. But now I, like, I personally cannot. Uh, just, uh, ah, uh, hello, thank Nabil. You. I just say thank you. I understand you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, okay, just to just a short recap on what's going on in the chat. Uh, uh, Nabil um, wrote about um, his Russian friend who uh, who is giving a lot of uh, support and he's praying for the end of war soon. Uh, it, that's in connection to what you were saying, I guess, you know, earlier about, you know, the people protesting, you know, uh, in Ukraine, Russian people protesting in Ukraine against uh, the tanks. 
Bogdan Ahimescu uh, wrote a compliment about your works and I would like to join in. Thank and you. Yes, your work <laughs> rocks, you know, <laughs> I really enjoyed, you know, looking at, at your stuff. And uh, a comment from Vena, which I'm going to write, uh, read. I just want to say, please stay safe and continue your great artwork. World needs people like you, strong and with the respect to nature, it empowers others. I can only imagine how much, uh, how many of us would like this horrific situation just end now. I admire your attitude about planning to rebuild. I hope it will happen very soon. Although I am in Iceland now, I can't sleep well since the war started. I hope we will be able to sleep well and save all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's really, it's really incredible. Yeah, I'm really, yeah, about all the support. I really, I must say that we really feel all the support here and uh, it makes us, you know, it gives us really strength, like much strength. And, you know, it's very important to not to be alone as a, as, as, as individuals, as a, as a nation, right, in difficult times. And we really feel not alone right now, and it's 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 amazing. So I guess this is your last chance to ask any questions or make comments uh, to Olia. We've gone over an hour with her, and she must feel very very tired. So being conscious of that, um, I welcome your comments, your questions. And if you have got none, uh, then we will close the session. Hearing the silence, I too want to thank you, Olia, very much. And um, hopefully we will see each other again, who knows, perhaps in the same format. Um, uh, I thank everybody who was uh, present today, and um, please uh, stay stay safe. Uh, I have a lot more to say, but, mm -hmm. but thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was really happy to oh, to speak oh, yeah. here and to have you all here. Olya, it's been such a pleasure to meet you and to, to have uh, our conversations. Uh, thank you so much for sharing all this information with us. Um, but most of all, I would like to thank the people who joined us today and uh, made room for this hour uh, to listen to Olya and to give her support. Uh, staying um, stronger together that's one way of, you know, of fighting this war. So thank you so, so much uh, for your participations you. and for your good energy. Uh, it makes Olia stronger. We had a conversation with Olia yesterday yes. that sometimes, you know, something which is unspoken and your presence, uh, that is something that these brave and amazing people in Ukraine actually uh, need the most. So thank you so, so, so much. Uh, oh, there is uh, something in the chat. Um, Hania, uh, you are beautiful, stay strong. This is to you, Olia. Then Dariusz Nowak wrote, uh, let me see if I'm missing something. Uh, please stay safe. And Susanna, I just wanted to thank you for connecting with us and thank you for your work. Your art is magnificent. I admire you and your bravery. Stay safe. Slava Ukraini. Uh, thank you. Thank so, you so much. Uh, oh. Beautiful. Uh, Ella, uh, okay, sorry, that's to me. <laughs> not, <laughs> not to all, yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, beautiful people, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Stay safe. Uh, let's stay connected. Uh, I'm waving to you from Krakow, Poland. Um, and I would like to thank you for participating in this meeting. Goodbye and stay safe. Bye.
Спасибо, Оля. Thank you. Спасибо. На связи. Спасибо. Спасибо. Спасибо.